Hello and welcome. This video is about building a covariance and correlation matrix of stock returns. I already imported the necessary modules here, which are the pandas data reader, matplotlib, daytime, and seaborn. And I already defined our time horizon, which is one year back until today. In case you don't know what's going on here, click the video on getting stock prices from the internet. I covered that in detail here. What we need now are some stocks. So we are defining a variable here and I'm just calling that portfolio. And we are including, for example, Google, Apple, let's say Microsoft and Tesla. And I also want to include the S&P 500 here, GSPC. In case you wonder, well, how do I get those ticker symbols? That's actually pretty easy. You just open up Yahoo Finance in your web browser and search for the stock you are interested in or the index. So let's say an example here. If I take Apple, you see I'm getting the Apple. Of course, I have to define Apple here. And now I'm getting the symbol or, for example, the S&P 500, as you see here. That is GSPC and so on. So if you are interested in a specific stock, just search for the symbol here or scrape it, whatever you like. So we have defined our portfolio and now we want to get prices for those stocks. And that is also covered in the stock price tutorial scraper. So check that out again. So I'm just typing down the syntax here. So that is reader, get data, Yahoo. And now we need the portfolio here, the start and the end date. And we want to store that in a data frame, which we are calling the F. So if we are printing up this data frame, we are getting way too much information. So we are just interested in the adjusted close price. So we are amending this request and just filter that for the adjusted close price. So if we are doing that again and printing out the data frame again, we are getting what we wanted to get and that is our absolute price changes of those equities here and the S&P 500. Now we need relative price changes and that is actually pretty easy. That is just using the PCT underscore change function and now we are getting the relative price changes of those stocks. So we are storing that in a variable which we are calling returns as we are just getting returns with that. And to build a covariance matrix now, that is actually very easy. We are just using this returns variable, so the relative price changes, and use the dot cov function for covariance. And what we are getting now is this covariance matrix. Now, what can we do with that? Well, we are seeing that we have positive covariances. And if we have positive covariances, we know that there is a positive directional relationship between those stocks. We don't know about the strength of this relationship, we just know that there is a positive relationship. Now, if we are taking a deeper look here, we are seeing this diagonal and this is the covariance between the exact same assets, so the covariance between Google and Google here. And that is just the variance of the asset. So if we are taking a look at the variances by just calling the var function here of this data frame returns, we are getting the variances of the particular stock. So for example, Google has a variance of 0, 0.0 something, and this is the exact same value as this value here. So the diagonal is just the variance. So a covariance of a certain asset with itself is just the variance which is actually pretty logic if you if you want to um, do it on your own comparing varying variances. So just calculate the uh, covariance between the exact same um, asset or the exact same uh, random variable. But whatever, we can't really work with this covariance matrix, right? So we want to have the relationships between those assets. We want to see what happens if one asset is rising? What is happening with the other one in detail? And that is where we need the correlation matrix for. So if we are taking a look at the returns frame again and call the core function, we are getting a correlation matrix. And if we are taking a look at the diagonal now, we are seeing that we have a 100% correlation, which makes sense as we are comparing Google with Google, and if Google is rising, of course, Google is rising by the exact same amount. 
What we already notice here is that we have, and that is the first row, that is just the correlation of every asset with Google. So this one here is just the correlation between Google and Apple. And we are noticing a pretty high correlation, right? So 78% here, or if we're taking a look at Microsoft, we even have um, 86% here. So that are pretty high correlation coefficients. What we're also noticing is that we have a rather low correlation with Tesla. And we have a pretty high correlation with the S&P 500, which makes totally sense as uh, Google is a part of the S&P 500, as far as I know. So if we are taking a look at the column here, we are noticing that we have a pretty high correlation with every asset with the S&P 500, but Tesla. So Tesla has a pretty low correlation coefficient which might be due to the fact that Tesla has gone through a pretty insane rally. So that is just an assumption. Maybe I'm wrong, but this could be an explanation why this correlation coefficient is pretty low. Well, to actually make this more yeah, meaningful, or not meaningful, but to visualize this matrix, we could use a heat map. And that is actually recommended as you can see those correlations in some colorized form. So if we calling the SNS, which is the Seaborn module, and call the, C uh, the, sorry, the heat map function and contain the correlation matrix as an argument. So we are just using returns.core. We are getting the exact same table here, so the exact same matrix in a more fancy way. So again, as we see here, so that is the Google row. And we are also saying that we have a dark color for Tesla. So a dark color is indicating a low correlation and a light color is indicating a high correlation. And what we're seeing here is the exact same thing, what we saw um, above here. So this is just a pretty cool way to visualize such a correlation matrix. So to give you an idea how to use that, well, you could, maybe you are invested in some stocks or you are, well, you are thinking about investing in stocks, you could just um, analyze some of your stocks and see how they are related to each other because you uh, you want to get a portfolio which is, well, which is not 100% um, correlated because if the market is crashing, well, then your portfolio is crashing, right? So you want to build a portfolio with like uncorrelated stocks or negatively correlated stocks would be pretty nice. So if one is falling, one is rising and stuff like that. So you can use that to do some portfolio analysis and to optimize your own portfolio. So that's actually a pretty nice thing to do it on your own. So as I saw, I have some Indian followers, um, including um, the Sensex here. So that is the Indian uh, index. So um, that is the BSESN symbol here. So let's include that and let's actually see. I think that's pretty interesting. Maybe you don't, but um, let's take a look at that. So let's see how the Indian stocks are correlated with the American tech stocks and the S&P 500. So that is just to give you an idea how, to, how you can use that correlation matrix. So if we are including that here, doing the online requests again and calling this data frame, we are getting the price changes for, no, not the price changes, sorry, the absolute prices for the Sensex. And if we are using this function here again, so the PCC change function, we are getting the relative price changes now. So if we are doing that and call the covariance matrix again, we are noticing that the Indian um, index stocks or the Indian stocks are have a positive relationship or positive directional relationship with the American stocks, as we see, because we have um, positive covariances here. But we don't know about the strengths of this relationship, and that is where we need the correlation matrix again. So we are using our correlation matrix again, and now it's getting interesting, and we see that we have rather low correlations here, right? So if we want to visualize that, we can see that in a more fancy way again. So this is the Sensex here, and the Sensex is, as we see, pretty low correlated with every American tech stock here, and very low correlated with Tesla. 
pretty low correlated with the S&P 500. And yeah, just to give you an idea how you can use this correlation matrix, have fun using it on your own, use it for your stocks, maybe you're interested in another sector of stocks. And I hope this is useful for you. In case it is, please like and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. See you next time. Bye-bye.